Hello and welcome back everybody. Uh, today's episode is called Everything But The Draugr. Uh, <laughs> it, it's called that unfortunately because uh, I, I, I set a timer for my recordings and uh, unfortunately the timer shut off exactly before the boss fight and then I thought I turned it back on and uh, so episode 4 we'll play some catch up. Uh, what ends up being missed, and it's not much, so uh, no big deal. But here I am uh, in Riverwood, having just left Bethselft, and uh, unfortunately, there's uh, the guy from the Dawn Guard waiting for me to come out of the store. Uh, but I'm gonna stop in here and grab the quest for the Golden Claw, uh, do a little bit of shopping potentially, and uh, and then we'll head out to uh, find Vandal and uh, Bleak Falls Barrow. Quite often, in fact, I um, what I do is I, I just go and get it, and then uh, just bring it back to them, just like I do with, uh, or just like the end result will be with Farangar in Dragon's Reach, um, already having the object before you receive the quest, um, and that's one of the things uh, I, I will say for anyone who, who found the freedom initially daunting, is that. Uh, if you really just play, you you end up completing quests. Um, your log fills up super quick when you start a game, and every NPC talking to you gives you quests. And before you know it, uh, as a first-time player, because you have no control, you don't know who's going to throw a quest at you. Uh, you end up with a log of quests, and that actually was my initial playing experience. Um, I was overwhelmed by the sheer number of quests that were thrown at me initially. Um, and then, you know, then I realized the trick was that time stops for everybody but you. Everybody will stand in place except you. Once you know that, those quests can wait. But also, most of those quests will self-complete if you just explore, if you find caves and dungeons and uh, complete them, you'll, you'll end up just completing a number of those quests all, all without trying. Um, so here I'm just selling a bunch of stuff. Uh, a note is that my level has gone up quite significantly and uh, I'm at level 20 I think um, and that's because I changed armor again I smithed a bunch of stuff up uh, tested a bunch of things on him uh, to see how I liked them found a couple things that I liked and then I uh, I changed them out for something else and uh, but I smithed the whole lot of them so my smithing went up uh, quite a bit and that that jumped my levels um, and uh, so some of the stuff I sold uh, is, is just some of the stuff that was available to Smith and, and some of the stuff that I tried um, and here I, I have this uh, every now and then every every my the things I like to buy change um, because I like buying the or getting the houses and, and building those I always buy goat horns because when you need goat horns they're super hard to find uh, so half the time lately I end up with a, a ton of goat horns um, so you see I just actually cleared out well, I think their inventory I mean their their money um, with all the no, stuff I that I had to sell so that my speech went up a couple uh, which was whatever I mean listen actually that that actually drives me crazy when you start this game and you start selling things they offer you nothing absolutely nothing for the value uh, and then they turn around and they sell it for 16 times what they just gave you. Um, that, that always sort of offended me. Uh, so, uh, one of the things I obsess about is increasing, um, not my speech, but my, my ability to get discounts at the store, my barter ability. Uh, so I always have that stuff on my armor and my, uh, gear. Uh, and there was just another quest waiting for me to, to receive it. Um, and here you're going to see me blatantly ignore Feindl and his request for me to get involved in his love life. Uh, I don't want him as a follower, so I don't really feel like lying to Camilla. Um, and uh, hmm. taking a pause here to determine if I want to find something else to do to push my level uh, to 21 before I go, or if I should just 
then I can train again with Vandal is the point. Um, if I level up now, I can train again, get my archery up, and then uh, head out. But I'm just going to go for it. And I know, I know there's a road to get to Bleak Falls Barrow, um, but I have, I think I've only found it once by by luck, uh, maybe. So I always just uh, aim in the general direction and then start scaling mountains. And so. Um, I mentioned uh, previously the spells that I use are, are different, and that is because of the mod Mysticism, uh, a magic overhaul, uh, and that does uh, impact almost all the spells. Uh, and uh, they make one of the spells I'm, I'm going to use in this playthrough quite useful, and that's uh, Repel Undead. Um, instead of just the generic... I love that shot, right in his nasal cavity. Instead of just the generic repelling, it also does damage. Uh, so it's uh, super useful. And one of the focuses I feel like uh, for for Boaz, he's, he's, he's not really going to focus on using destruction magic. Uh, he might occasionally use some in, in his defense, uh, but he's going to try and focus more on utilizing restoration spells whenever possible. Um, and... So, uh, in the last episode, I grabbed out a bunch of potions. Some of those potions were blacksmith elixirs. So, uh, in addition to just crafting my armor and then smithing it up with my own leveled ability, uh, I also then used the potion and pushed the crafting up just a little bit more so that I do have that edge I mentioned before, uh, just that little tiny edge on my enemies. And, uh, if you're watching and, and I'm killing these bandits with uh, one arrow, um, even on expert difficulty, you might think that I'm sort of cheesing it. Uh, but I don't think it's unreasonable for an archer to be able to kill someone with a single arrow. Um, especially considering that's the edge. What I use as my gauge are the other enemies uh, bears actually bears take a couple arrows to kill um, trolls take a couple arrows to kill uh, Draugr take a couple arrows to kill uh, the boss Draugr um, so I, I don't really that's how I gauge and I try and keep my my weapons at that level the whole time um, I don't really I don't really care that I, I one shot some some lower level things you know you kill a wolf with one arrow big deal um, but I still find that bears are a challenge and, and some NPC characters are a challenge. Uh, coming up on Bleak Falls Barrow, there's always one of them who is significantly stronger. Uh, and that one is always a little bit more of a challenge. Um, they usually, usually do a significant amount of damage to me when I come up here. Um, so I'm going to, uh use my mutagen when I get a little closer and just go for it. I'm using a sword that I smithed up uh, that I believe comes as either part of the godly set that I that I have a mod for or it is uh, from the red guard uh, red guard tweaks but uh, so I, I'm going to mix up my playstyle. You're not going to see me just uh, whipping out my bow and, and shooting everything. Um, I'm gonna try and get some hand-to-hand. -hand. Most of my characters uh, have about, you know, level 50 hand-to-hand -hand and then uh, archery level 70, you know, to 100 when it's all said and done. Um, so I do like to, uh, to mix it up, but yeah, I'm gonna focus mainly on, on my combat skills and restoration for these. And gosh, I do love the uh, the Dawn Guard spell, um, Stendar's Aura. Love that spell. I wish it was uh, more powerful. Uh, also, I wish I could see when I had it equipped. Um, it's so blinding, <laughs> so blinding, uh, and it, the damage isn't really very efficient. But every now and then, I like to throw it on, and I think I always end up putting it on with enemies that don't really count. You know. Uh, 
enemies who aren't really going to be dramatically affected by it. So we are going to head into the definitive dungeon of Skyrim. The first experience we all get, Bleak Falls Barrow. And uh, we will get through Bleak Falls Barrow in this episode. And uh, I did mention, you know, I'm only going to slightly sneak. So, here I am, just walking in. No reason to sneak yet. Uh, you know, he's not the kind of guy who sneaks everywhere, that's for sure. So I generally do, uh, I, I generally play good characters, uh, or at least lightly morally gray. Uh, I don't mind an occasional murder if somebody's super annoying. I mean, I have uh, killed Nazim, haven't we all? Um, and, uh, ooh, excellent, excellent kill cam. Love it. Taking these guys out pretty easily. Um, but uh, I wish uh, I wish there was a mod for PS4 that allowed me to play the game without having any interaction whatsoever with Delphine. Um, I abhor that woman. I, I can't stand her character. I love the actress's voice. I love the actress. But I do not like Delphine. I think she ruins the game for me nearly every time with her pushy rudeness and her self-importance. Anyway, uh... Lock picking, lock picking is pretty easy, pretty straightforward for the most part, and you won't see me really struggle with many locks here. Um, Infinite perk points is a mod that I have uh, installed as well, and how he slips the infinite perk points in, and and uh, what this allows you to do is not have infinite perk points, but as you level a skill up, you can then apply a perk point to it at any point. Um, which I think is fair. Should you you learn a skill, but what you can't use it? You learn a skill, but the miserly game system requires you to choose one over the other, so your character can't be a fully fleshed being. I find that ridiculous. So uh, infinite perk points. Uh, but what it does, how we got it into the uh, the game to work, is that it levels up your your locksmithing tree to 100. Um, so you hit legendary. Uh, reset your locksmithing tree and it gives you 230 perks the maximum amount that the game will allow you so that as you earn them by learning the skills you can apply them and receive the benefits um, so you can be a fully fleshed out mage who has the abilities of, of you know lightning fire and ice or you can just uh, focus as a, as a character and just focus on just fire it's, it's your choice entirely uh, and what it does is just give you the freedom to choose. Uh, there are lots of skills I don't use uh, at all. You know, I might in incidentally level them up like here. Pickpocket, I don't I don't pickpocket. I don't like pickpocketing. I'm not the thief character. Um, Andy, <laughs> you probably won't see it, uh, but I have a mod that stops Brynjolf from approaching me in Riften uh, because Good God, that man has interrupted more conversations than I can count. He will take any moment. As soon as he sees you, he will try and interrupt you. But uh, hold on, i got to get ready for these skeevers here. Die. There we go. Okay. Uh, wait, that's, that's not it. There's always another one. Where are you? Oh, uh, and here I am. Using destruction magic. <sighs> so, uh, occasionally, I'm going to contradict myself from time to time, but uh, this was uh, previous to my current thought processes, uh, but I am still focusing primarily on restoration. So, uh, lots of lots of active effects there. I do like to be able to take damage. Uh, that is true. I like to be able to take damage as uh, one of the balances that I try and set for my character. Uh, and I will craft numerous sets of armor uh, to adjust these things throughout the game because I, I do like to keep it more balanced than not, um, honestly. So I do like cheats in the sense that uh, they are shortcuts. I don't have to spend, you know, 
hours and hours hunting for, you know, things because why, you know, or uh, doing something just because it's going to push me an additional 40 levels, um, which I don't find enjoyable. I don't really want to play 80 levels worth necessarily anymore. Um, and then uh, here we are at Arvel, Arvel the Swift. Get some spider eggs. And uh, approach Arvel and find out you, what he knows. Robert, you did it. You killed it. Now cut me down before anything else shows up. Yes, the claw. I know how it works. The claw, the markings, the door, and the hall of stories. I know how they all fit together. Help me down and I'll show you. You won't believe the power the Nords have hidden there. Sweet if you do choose the, the hand over the claw first option, of course, it says, I can't move my arms. How am I supposed to hand you the claw? Um, and here, I don't know when to kill him. I mean, he's going to run away. He always runs away, so I just kill him right away. So I might look like I'm a heartless ass wipe. But, uh, yeah, if I don't kill him, something else kills him, apparently. So, better me. I just killed him. He's dead. Got the claw. Mission accomplished. And that's, uh, the only disappointment about this room is how many of these things are completely empty. I am a looter as well, uh, so during my playthroughs I'm just gonna play like I play, as I said, and I'm gonna stop and grab the loot out of chests. Now we're coming up at the Draugr part. We'll switch to, uh, Repel Undead. Loot. Looting the dead, looting the dead. The dead have so much money. I do love looting the dead. There you go. And go. Oof. And he's gonna run off. And we get another one. Boop. Bye bye bye. And I'm leveling up. Super. Whoa, Ragdoll. <laughs> he ran into the uh, the swinging guillotines. Guillotines. The swinging blades of death. And so all the restless Draugr you can see, they're all, uh, they're all just, you know, dying. And the spell does wear off on some of them, so it doesn't kill quite a few of them. Uh, I will have to hit them again with the spell. Good shot. It is super hard sometimes to level up restoration. I swear to goodness. Um, that is that is my complaint sometimes about uh, the magic skills. It is it's kind of hard to, to get them to really level up. I mean, some days I'm using destruction and it's just not doing a thing. Uh, but I believe mysticism has altered that. You constantly are seeing your, your magic level going up uh, with the usage of spells and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the easiest way to level your magic is to use the most powerful spell that you can manage one way or another um, and the casting of it, of course. Making it functionally useful. You can't cast a spell on nothing and then expect it to to give you any I'm not taking any damage here. Huh. I mean my armor is pretty good and these guys are matched to level, but I'm a little surprised they weren't really doing any damage to me. I mean, I won't be smithing my armor up every time I, I pass a crafting bench, so uh the damage I will receive will be higher. And most certainly the most damage I'm going to receive is going to come from the form of a dragon, I wager. At least for a while. But here, Draugr, Draugr, Draugr. I actually want more Draugr to fight. I want him to fight lots of Draugr. I prefer him to fight Draugr than people. Alright, point up here. Yeah, you see my numbers are all over the place. Uh, my health is actually quite high because I put health, uh, plus health on a bunch of things. Um, so... And I'm level 20, so that's at least 200, you know, everything else is a little buffed, for sure. 
uh, but I will I will end up altering these numbers constantly because it is one of the fun things I love that aspect of the game so meh enjoy the playthrough I do take damage I do give damage so alright this is always hard to get to this chest hmm yeah I uh what do I have that there? The skeleton key. Uh, I grabbed the skeleton key. It's from... It was from uh, one of the wardrobes. Uh, it was just in there. And so I don't really need lock picks. Uh, sometimes I, I... When I reactivate some of the lock picking tree, I will choose uh, to leave the lock picks breakable. Uh, but for expedience and uh, for this playthrough I thought it would just be simpler um, for me to just use the mod that makes it easier for me to pick locks so that I don't have to waste time picking locks See, restoration is constantly going up here which is great don't get burned Come and get it. Come and get it. Line up, everybody. And, uh, yeah, you, you know, just hit them again, even if they're already affected. Hit them again if you've got the Magicka. Uh, get the experience. Every now and then I corner I corner a Skeleton or a Draugr, and I'm just totally spamming them with uh, Repel Undead, and they're trying desperately to run away. And it's funny, they'll actually run out of doors, like uh, they'll run to a door and pass through the door and then they come back through that door to attack you and then you just hit them again uh, because they were unaffected uh, after leaving the room and then you can recast the spell on them and get more experience I've done that with a couple you know every now and then that's a uh, that's kinda what you gotta do if you really wanna level a specific skill is you gotta set up a situation for that skill to level you know get a stronger enemy to just wail on you from time to time and uh, you know, let let your armor take the damage so you can level that up. Boom. I love that effect. That is the effect of Dawnbreaker. Um, and uh, again, I've, I've played so many times that the, f the stuff that makes this fun uh, at this point is being able to use the, di the different effects on the weapons and things like that so instead of fire it's it's the dawnbreaker spell uh, so undead do occasionally explode from my arrows or my attacks um, you know the dwarven black bow of fate mm, enchant may uh, get involved at some point because I love the sparkly colors and the animation uh, that happens when you're killing people and is it just me or, or is it sometimes really difficult to get these mushrooms off the wall like and there are several sets throughout the game that like you can't actually pick uh, so half the time I stop half the time I, I don't I do love glowing mushroom uh, I will use it a lot for my fortify smithing potions nice orcish arrows but my arrows are better than the orcish arrows And I'm remembering that we are about to encounter a troll. And we're going to equip our bow because uh, I'm not really sure I want to face full on troll claw damage. Because while those insignificant Draugr didn't really do anything to me, a troll is another story. So there, that, that took quite a few hits. That was good. That's good. I feel much more confident about the level of my bow. Uh, I won't be smithing it up anytime soon, that's for sure, but uh, I do it occasionally. Every, every, I don't know, bunch of levels. Every bunch of dungeons. Something like that. Or if I uh, just decide I want to wear a different kind of armor. Right, switch back to our hand-to-hand -hand weapons. And here we go. Repel undead. Oh, you're too strong. All right, all right. We'll just take that. Oh, see? It's not dying right off the bat either. 
Kiss cam. Excellent. Boom. Uh, yeah, another fun, uh, another fun thing to throw on a weapon, uh, as far as enchantments go, is, uh, the May, the May Rune's Razor enchantment. Um, if you can get it, things have a chance to insta-kill. I mean, who doesn't love a chance to insta-kill? Alright, so we're getting closer to the end of the dungeon. None of this stuff is useful. Blades of Death. A couple more Draugrs. Yeah, we're going to try and snipe a couple of these. Boom. Burning, burning, burn. Yes. I, uh, I'm a fire guy. I, I, I like fire uh, in terms of elemental damage. Uh, as a red guard, I think their thing is fiery. Uh, they feel like you know desert people, fire, that sort of thing. Uh, so, but almost all my characters go with the fire affinity. I did do. Uh, I have a Nord uh, female who is uh, all ice, um, which is pretty badass. Uh, so I do play. Uh, I play about eighty percent male characters, twenty percent female characters. But uh, in fairness to the females. <laughs> my female characters usually accomplish a hell of a lot more uh, than my, my male characters. In fact, I beat the game uh, the first time with a female character. Oof. I, I feel kind of silly doing archery up close, but I feel even sillier pausing to change weapons. Uh, so... If it's if it's gonna be difficult, then uh, I will change weapons because I don't want to die because I was too stubborn to change my weapon. And uh, here we go with our first golden claw puzzle door lock. And uh, <laughs> I guess a lot of people don't really know this, but uh, they do they do explain it in the lore. Uh, and I have heard a couple people say it in in videos as well, but uh, it, it, they tell you in the game if you pay attention to what's happening. Um, the locks on the doors are not to make getting in difficult. That's not the point of them. The point of them is to keep the draugr in. That's the point of them. Uh, so all you need to get in is a claw and, you know, change a couple things and you're in, no problem. But who in their right mind would want to go into a draugr infested crypt? Who? The dragonborn. That's who. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Uh, the Dragonborn should be able to maybe one-shot some humans with with a bow and arrow. I don't think that's insane. So, bats, awesome. Uh, and this cave is actually going to be the end of the episode for us, of course, because I know for a fact that it's going to cut off uh, right before the Draugr comes to life. So, right now I'm just going to... Uh, get a chest or two back here and, and I didn't know about this chest for the longest time thank you Fudge Muppet for uh, helping me find this chest alright and uh, so I'm just going to go up here I'm, my plan was to activate the power and uh kill the draugr and keep going but we'll see you next time thanks bye